Okay, here we have the Prusa Core 1 and I want to show you a few calibrations you can do um, for this printer when you use the accelerometer, accelerometer. This is like a little electronic piece that is going to help you to fine-tune this printer. Okay, let me show you how this works. Um, so this comes as a kit with like a little bit like a, a wire that is installed in the power supply and um, so that once that is installed you can connect this thing at any time and then uh, on a cold printer you know the hot end shouldn't be hot and let me show you how this works there's two things you can calibrate with this <coughs> all right so first of all i have to turn this thing around to the back because we have to connect this wire right um yeah let me show you how this works here we are in the back so once you have this additional wire installed, it will connect here to the Wi-Fi module. And the wire itself comes through this hole up here. There is a rubber plug in there that fell now inside. And you need to go through this hole with this cable. plug it in down here. You heard it click, there it is in, and then we can turn the printer around again. So then we can see what's happening up front here. There it is. There it is. Here, yeah, look at this. It popped all the way to the front door. Here we have it. That's the plug that goes through the hole there. A second thing you have to do, you need to take the sock off the... Do I have a magnet here? Oh, yeah. You need to take the sock off. All right, guys, I have to reach around to go to the switch. Why? Does Prusa not have the switch up front? This would be so much better. Every time you have to go behind there to turn it on or off. Okay. Printer is on and we are going to in the settings menu. And for that maybe I go down here with the camera. Mm. You want to kind of see what's happening, no? So we go to settings, and then all the way down there we have um, input shaper and face stepping. Those are the two we can run, right? Let's do input shaper. There's a thing that's called calibration. Okay, we click on that. It tells you to have the accelerometer ready. gonna park this thing now. So it just wants to make sure that it is in the middle. Okay, so the accelerometer is firmly attached. We will click continue and the rest of it will do on its own. Leave this thing alone. Don't have other printers run next to it. Have it on a quiet setup where it doesn't shake and vibrate around. And it's gone through all those things. The um, 
print head is not moving much in this case. It goes through different motor frequencies to look for this kind of vibration. You hear them? Resonances, basically. And uh, this camera I will let run all the way through in real time so that you know how it feels like and how long it takes. I doubt that you can hear those frequencies. They are pretty low. We are at 75 hertz now. Going up to 80. Now it says it will calibrate the accelerator meter. Let it do that. <coughs> and then it does the Y resonance now. So what's happening is um, the motor is shaking the whole setup and the accelerator meter is looking for this stuff. You hear the loud stuff. That's when the whole thing starts swinging around in a bad way. Once it's done, it's going to show the new numbers on the screen. Every printer is going to be different. It just takes its time. So don't hit the table or make any big vibration around the printer. The best place for this is really actually where you have the printer print after you're done with calibration. takes really a long time. Alright, so the input shaper is done now. It computed an MZV 46 Hz for X and Y axis. So that is it for this printer, and every printer here has its own numbers, its own filter kind and type for uh, individually those motors that are used and the whole setup, right? So our next one will be phase stepping. That is another calibration thing we can do. You go in here, yes, I say yes, now the thing is going home. It was quick, right? So my sensor is attached, and now it goes in the middle there, makes a few movements to calibrate the motors. Right now we are calibrating the X motor.
and that again takes a while. Once it's done, it's going to show you the result on the screen. Now we're going over to the Y model. There it is. So the X vibration was reduced by 88% and the Y vibration by 91%. Now we can click OK. And then we are back to a normal print here. Um, we can check the belt tension next, if we want to. Um, let me disconnect the accelerator meter now. There it is here. Now I have to disconnect in the back the wire. So the wire is disconnected. We can pull it out. There it is. Now we won't forget to put the plug back in on this side. Okay, and then also we can put our sock back on. And now you understand why we do this on the cold extruder. Because we don't want to burn ourselves. Okay, um, in order to do the Manual belt calibration, the manual belt tuning. It's best if we turn all our lights off. Let me turn all the lights off so that you can see what's going on. <coughs> so I click continue. Continue. Now, this thing is going in position. Now, I need to get the camera closer. Okay, I hope you're ready. We click continue. Now, we have a dial here where we can dial up or down. And what we are looking for when we change is for this belt to move as much as possible. I don't know if you can see it, but in this position here, I would say this one, the belt is the most moving back and forth. Okay, so now we continue to the second belt. I pushed the wrong button. Sorry about that. I'm gonna home again.
So we go to uh, frequency where the belt moves the most. That is the one here, 91. Now we go to the second one here. Oh. This is where the belt moves the most. Push here. So now we know the upper belt has 91.5, the lower belt 85.0. Continue. We tighten both screws to two eighths of a turn. So it's one quarter turn for both. So we want Ninety and ninety-eight. That's what we want. Ninety and ninety-eight. It's supposed to be ninety-eight, right? So I turn this to ninety-eight, and then I turn this here tighter, 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 until this thing is heavily moving. That would be here. This one is supposed to be 90, so I turn this dial to 90. Then I have to go in here. Where's the hole? Here. Then I have to tighten until I have the most movement. Oh. There, so now I have the most movement there. So now I have it uh, optimal, 90 and 98. I can say continue and I can try this again. This should be the most movement. It's here. And there, yeah, that's the most movement. Continue. Continue. And finish. So when we go to calibration, to the belt calibration, we go here to manual belt tuning. Okay. You click OK. You click Continue. It will home. Continue. You can move this around to the frequency you want. And then you look up um, at what frequency the belt moves the most, and then you push down OK it. You do the same here, where the most vibration is happening. It's there, and then you know your belt tension. You can say continue. You can go to adjust, and you can say, OK, I want 98 as my belt tension and then you change the belt tension with the tensioner screw click again and then you go to 90 over here this is the lower belt tension so the right um, tension screw turn that back and forth until the belt swings the most click on it again this is the one we want 98 and 90 continue continue and finish and there your belt tuning is done very easy and straightforward and i hope this explanation helps